Well, my name is Greg Michaloski. I'm the Chief Currency Analyst for FXDD, and I'm doing a Forex commentary specifically for Forex trading. I'm going to take a look at the Euro versus US dollar, and, and it's being influenced by different forces uh, in today's uh, trading. Uh, and uh, some of it uh, is technical, and some of it also is fundamental. From a fundamental uh, standpoint, uh, most people know by now that the um, the uh, worries about uh, the amount of, uh, of uh, support needed by the European banks of the from the ECB uh, was much less than expectations. There was some that expected that the uh, tender uh, today would draw uh, uh, needs uh, of 250 to 300 billion. It only came in at about 131 uh, billion of support needed, uh, and so this caused a uh, surge in the euro versus U.S. dollar in earlier trading. Uh, later, there were some uh, concerns out of Germany. Uh, there was a, a German uh, election within the party. Parliament uh, for what is a, a predominantly a, a symbolic position of the presidency of the parliament. Uh, there's a 1,244 member um, uh, parliamentary parliament, and the uh, chancellor's uh, party, that's Angel, uh, uh, Angela Merkel's uh, party, uh, has a majority by about uh, 23 uh, votes or 21 votes actually, uh, and. Uh, the uh, vote for uh, the presidency uh, led to, in the first round led to a shortfall of a majority needed of uh, 623 votes by Merkel's candidate, and this caused uh, some concern that uh, perhaps there was less of support for the chancellor uh, as uh, she struggles with uh, budgets, as she struggles with uh, the haves and the have-nots of the eurozone, and whether the Germany should su uh, support them when. Uh, you know, perhaps uh, domestic issues may uh, also be of more importance for uh, the country. And so this uh, this vote has gone through the second round now uh, and uh, without a majority. And what happens after the end of the third round is the, the, the candidate with the highest votes, which would be Merkel's candidate, his name is Wolf, uh, would be would uh, be elected the president. So it's kind of a mute point, though, of who becomes elected because he has a strong lead. But the fact is that uh, uh, the um, the inability to gather a momentum uh, or a majority by uh, Merkel's government uh, perhaps weighed in a little bit on the euro. Nevertheless, uh, we are seeing also a third factor here, uh, and that is a quarter end as we end into the enter into the last hour of European trading here. Uh, uh, the, we are seeing uh, some pretty good volatility in the euro versus dollar. Euro, euro, uh, euro versus dollar. You can see that more clearly in the five-minute chart how the market spiked to the upside, spiked or fell sharply to the downside, spiked to the upside, fell sharply to the downside. Now spiked Hiking back up to the upside, this uh, probably has everything to do with quarter end type um, window dressing that may be taking place amongst banks, hedge funds, corporations, you name it. Uh, there's uh, uh, those people who are probably involved uh, that we as uh, retail traders or most of us as retail traders would not be able to see these uh, flows directly, but uh, they're probably out there and causing uh, this um, movements back and forth. Uh, the fourth factor is the technicals and that's what uh, I'll take a look at now because that's what uh, we uh, tend to focus on uh, is what the technical picture is telling us and that gives us a bias and we use uh, trading near what we call borderline areas near levels areas where uh, there is a low risk uh, or uh, uh, buy or sell opportunity uh, and that occurs at things like the uh, moving average levels, Fibonacci retracement levels. Uh, but taking a look at this hourly chart here, we are right, right back up testing uh, the 100 hour moving average. That 100 hour moving average comes in at 122.88 and where's the price? 122.87. The market was up here earlier, making to a high of 93, uh, but uh, coming back off and this spike to back up to the upside. I mean, I think the, the the range is almost exactly the same in this hours of trading. I can zoom in here. Uh, in the last hour of trading, the low uh, came in at 122.46. This lows came in at 122.46. The high for this hour came in at 122.93. When did this high come in? 122.93. So in a fluke of uh, you know trading day, trading. Um, uh, uh, I don't know, in the trading here over the last couple hours suggests, uh, you know, has the same exact range and it's uh, not necessarily a, a, a very narrow range. We had about a 50 pip, pip uh, trading range here uh, with the first hour uh, leaving a big huge tail to the upside in this hour starting low and moving up to the high. So uh, quite, um, quite
quite a volatile situation here in the euro versus US dollar. But anyway, from a technical perspective, what we can say is that as long as we stay below this line, 122.88, I think the bias is going to remain uh, to, uh, to the downside. Uh, if we move back above, above uh, we obviously have to get through the 93 level, and then there's additional resistance up here at the 123.07, which is the 200 hour moving average. That's a green line uh, in this chart. It's the confirming moving average that I often to look at. And I look at the blue line as the trigger and the green line is a, a confirming and since we are dealing off an hourly chart we'd love to see the close above the 200 hour moving average uh, but uh, I would I would think that if we break above the 93 level we should see further momentum to the upside for the euro versus uh, US dollar but uh, until that time uh, look for sellers against this level look for uh, and why would they sell against this 88 level 83 88 to 93 really uh, is because what is your risk your risk is only about uh, 10 or so pips market breaks above 93 you want to get out of that trade uh, and so that is a risk for traders off the five minute chart here uh, the last move to the downside came down again to that 46 ish type area and that was 38.2 percent retracement that's moved up from the uh, yesterday's low to the high uh, for 38.2 percent comes in at that 46 level so that's where uh, we're going to look for support down on the downside here uh, for the euro versus US dollar so uh, overall uh, there's uh, a lot of fundamentals going on here in the euro versus US dollar uh, and there's a lot uh, going on from a technical perspective as well uh, keeping keeping uh, uh, track uh, keep track of these uh, key key uh, resistance and uh, support levels uh, if the market should uh, break uh, again it's to the upside get above that 93 level look for the next move to come and test the 200 hour moving average and then we should see a further move to the upside if that level is broken uh, if this 100 bar moving average does hold uh, we got to get through the 74 level really get through this 46 level on the downside this uh which has been contained uh the downside over the last two hourly bars this is greg michaelowski with a forex commentary for fx street uh brought to you by fxdd